Guys, how we doing? Welcome to Good Works Tractors. We are just down the road from the shop at Mr. Eric Perry's house. Doing something a little bit different for you guys this time around. We're gonna talk about this Bombalite 3P24 stump grinder. I didn't want you to just get the information from me. So what we did instead this time, I bought it, delivered it to Eric, let him use it for a little bit to give us his feedback, not just mine, on what this piece of equipment is all about. So this tractor was actually purchased from me, Good Works Tractors, and uh, actually drove it down the road right to his house and delivered it. So we're gonna go over all the add-ons that Eric has put on this tractor since he purchased it from me, which by the way, less than a year ago, uh, last June, so just less than a year, he's added over 300 hours on this tractor. That's called putting it to work. But the one thing he hasn't put on there yet, our Bora wheel spacers. I am proud to be sponsored by Bora, so if you're looking for that stability solution, which I think Eric might need out here, or at the other properties he has, get some Bora wheel spacers, there's gonna be a link down below. And if you like what you see here, I'd love to get a thumbs up from you. Make sure you hit that subscribe button right down below. Read through the description underneath the video, or head on over to goodworkstractors.com. Here we go. Okay, so the 3P24, what we have going on here is a stump grinder that's sized appropriately for the machine. So 30 to 55 PTO horsepower, that's gonna be the range for this size stump grinder here. You have an optional hydraulic control so that you can feather and fine tune the swing, you know, both left to right and up and down. Uh, there's gonna be this flow control little dial here along with the two individual handles that you have to control the different operations. It's got a very substantial frame that's gonna accommodate both a category one and a category two three point hitch. It is gonna be a standard 540 RPM rear PTO connection as well. So we pulled out a Spico quick hitch, great quick hitch overall, but the problem with this is it's not quick hitch compatible. There's a good reason for that. I reached out to Bombalite because I couldn't figure it out for myself, but it's all to do with this PTO shaft right here. It needs to have a lot of space to get the full maximum range, uh, both going left to right and up and down. So the spacing that's gonna be found on the frame of the stump grinder itself is gonna be 30 inches ID compared to 22 inches on the quick hitch. And then vertically up and down, you're gonna have 20 inches of space for this PTO shaft to work around in compared to only 11 inches on the quick hitch. I wanna spend a little bit of time on this external control, which is an optional feature from Bombalite. So this is factory recommended. You know, maybe it isn't required, but in my opinion, and I think in user experience, it's something you don't want to forget to purchase. It's also something that's gonna be cheaper to add on up front versus adding it on after the fact. So something for a point of reference, you know, I had a snowblower hooked up to my three-point hitch. It had some hydraulic controls on it without any kind of a flow control knob here. And if you're trying to rotate that hydraulic chute and you're just tapping a button or maybe a lever up front that's on your tractor, there's no ability to adjust that rate of speed. It's just on and off, so it can go really lightning quick. And you can imagine with a stump grinder, you don't want that to happen. So that's the benefit of this entire control circuit here is that not only does it have the extra controls, but it's gonna give you this ability to fine tune and really feather left to right or up and down. On top of that, if you don't have two outlets on the back, you're not gonna be able to use this stump grinder without this external control. You're gonna have two circuits. Right here is gonna control up and down of the stump grinder. And then the circuit down below with this cylinder is gonna control that left to right angle. So to summarize, if you don't get this control, you're gonna need two rear outlets, two, a fourth and a fifth, or a third and a fourth, some combination. But if you do buy this external control, you only need one rear outlet on your machine. So in my opinion, I would not buy the stump grinder without this control, but don't take my word for it. Let's talk to somebody who's been using it for about a month. Yeah, you'd be an idiot not to have that. <laughs> Sorry. It, well, uh, you need to have a touch on this, and that allows you to get give you a touch. To like really, I mean, you can almost like micro move it left or right or up and down. Correct. With yep. this control right here. Yep. Okay. With a stump grinder, you're always afraid of taking off too big of a chunk and you, you know lose a tooth and stuff like that, and this enables you to control the machine. A few other key features I think that are important. Number one, the shipping weight on this thing is 920 pounds. So if that gives you an idea of just how substantial this piece of equipment is, it's gonna work well on a four series, a three series, maybe even a smaller five series as well. Now down here on the business end, this is gonna be a 24 inch rotor equipped with 34 carbide tip teeth. 
It's gonna spin at 810 RPMs with this gearbox, and you're also gonna get six bonus teeth just in case you wear these out. And of course, you're gonna have plenty of grease cirques pretty much anywhere you look on this piece of equipment, which is a sign of any quality attachment. Now, if you're looking for something, a stump grinder for a smaller machine, you don't have the extra hydraulics, look for the 1P24. There's a lot of videos that have been done on YouTube about that as well. We can ship any of these attachments, anything from Balmalite, whether it's for a tractor or for a skid steer, all around the country. You're also welcome to do local pickup here in Kalamazoo, Michigan. Okay, so that's enough of what I kind of noticed about this piece of equipment, but the whole point was to get it into somebody else's hands and let them play around with it. Anything from the unboxing all the way to using it. I think you have, what, five or six hours on it now, you said? Yes. Okay, so we're gonna see what he likes, what he doesn't like. We're gonna cut out whatever he doesn't like from the video, but he can still talk about it. No, it was, it's, a, it's a good machine. It takes a little bit to set up just to get everything right. Uh, but once you start, uh, it, it goes pretty quick. Did you learn anything in the setup process, the unboxing? Was there anything you would have done differently? Yes. Uh, it took me about an hour to figure out how to get it out. If I would have read the manual, it would show me exactly where to hook <laughs> okay. up and how to take it All out. Right, so good, good. I suggest that you do that. That's why you have somebody else do it the first time for you. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so anything in operation? I think you had mentioned about this floating guard. Do you leave it in the up position? Are you using it much? You know, I haven't used it yet, uh, but for the most part, I have a lot of area to spray it, and that's what I wanted to do, just spray it thin. In. Okay. I don't have to control it. Okay. But uh, definitely, if you do need to control it, I got one stump that's near a window. I'll definitely have it down when that happens. Okay. So it has its place. Correct. When you need it. Now online, you know how manufacturers do. It says something like a 30-inch diameter stump with a 42-inch root base, and uh, eight inches above, four inches below, all this stuff. It says you can drill or shave that off in about 10 to 15 minutes. What have you found to be your experience? Now that's pretty aggressive. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, I try to take my time and, and not, you know, hurt the machine and make sure that it does what it's intended to do. Yep. Uh, it'll take a little bit longer than that. But, yeah. you know, five more minutes on a stump isn't really going to kill anybody. Right. So the thing is that it does the job and it goes down uh, as deep as you want. And especially with the hydraulic top link, I can make it go deeper. So Sure, sure. So Eric's going to get more into this, but he actually lives in, unfortunately, a floodplain where there was just torrential rains and, and flooding going on for the last two years? Three years. Three yeah. years, okay. And so he has roughly 50 dead oaks that are back behind his house along with some other stuff as well. And that's a pretty challenging type of tree, especially if it's been dead for a while, to grind. Yes, it's pretty hard. Okay, so between that and maybe getting some experience, getting acclimated with how the stump grinder works, mm -hmm. you're hoping to see some improvements perhaps in time? Yes, I think, uh, you know, it, it's going better. Each time I do it, it, it goes faster. Okay. So it's just a matter of the setup where to place it, make sure you get the right arc and get the most stump yeah. in the first swing rather than keep having to move it back and forth to get the right amount of, uh, of, of stump. So don't get discouraged in the beginning. Right. Oh okay. yeah, have fun with it. <laughs> and did you find any benefit to playing around with this flow control at a, whether it was a faster or a slower setting oh, or where do you like it? Definitely. Well, when, I, when we first started, we for completely forgot about that and it was kind of a herky-jerky thing and when it would move be like oh, I hope I don't you know hurt anything and then we remembered about that turn it all the way down to one which the manual says to okay. start off with uh, and the feathering was really nice okay uh, in fact I'm leaving it on one just because it, it is such a nice touch that you don't have to worry about you know yeah. jerking it and stuff is there anything else in the manual that was helpful <laughs> I'll read it all <laughs> you know Read it before you go to bed so you can fall asleep. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Bedtime reading material. Now, there was, though, there was a procedure in the manual, right, to get yes. these teeth broken in? Right. What did that say? Do you yep. remember? They said just take it easy on a small stump to begin with, just to round the teeth off so it's not so sharp. Okay. Uh, because otherwise, you could catch and, and break a tooth. So. Yeah, okay. And that's so. similar. I, I've heard that before on my, my, my uh, brush mulcher that I have for my skid steer from Bomb Light as well. Same kind of concept. Take it easy in the beginning and let them kind of get rounded off and worked in, and then you're good to go. Yep. Yeah, and also in the manual too, it says not to uh, uh, lower the wheel down on cement um, just to keep it safe. So that's why we have the blocks and everything there and figure out we had to add blocks to the other side to make it level. Otherwise, uh, uh, the unit would not sit level, it would tip one side or another. So Yeah, so that is one thing that would be nice to see is a parking stand of some kind out on this business end. Because the back end is just going to rest right on the frame. Correct. Do I start with a little one or a big one? Little one. What are you doing with that? 
because there's sand here, I find that it makes the machine okay. not tilt as much. Huh. I mean, the, the sand isn't stable, that's all. It, it, and when you get down low, when I start to grind, it'll it'll torque a little bit. Okay. Huh. So, I mean, if you got hard ground, I mean, because this is all shifting sands yeah, kind of thing. Right. But how is it in the operator seat, spun around, leaning over through the ROPS? Is that? It's actually pretty comfortable. I rest my elbows on the on the crossbar. So we got to get one of those. Yeah, and, but you can see everything. Is and, there a GWT discount in the future? On, are you going to start manufacturing that setup? You, you know what? I'll, I'm talking to my supplier <laughs> and I'll let you know. <laughs> it just it's looks. It's all about getting materials in, you know? <laughs> right, yeah, that's, that's a struggle right now. It just looks awkward, but it's not too bad, though. No, no, it, it's it's very easy. You know, you're kneeling on the seat and you're just just working it okay. and uh, but you can see everything and that's the nice thing and you can I mean you lower the blade and when you start to see chips fly then you know you got it deep enough okay and you start to move it across slowly until you you feel the resistance and then you just back off a little bit and let it do its thing and okay uh, if you go too fast what will happen is that the whole frame will kind of bump up and down a little bit uh, although the way I've got my three-point hooked up my lower arms I've got them on the I probably should change it so it's Oh, static the, rather yeah. than the adjustable. Have a little floating in there. Yeah. yeah. Yep. So that kind of moves a little bit. And I use these boards here just because of the sand. Uh, it's not a solid base, so it'll, it'll tend to uh, rock the, the frame a little bit. So that's why I put those boards there. But normally, if it wasn't for the sand, yeah. I, it wouldn't need that. Okay. But yeah, once it, you get in the right position, that this was pretty good. I only had to move it twice. Yeah. Uh, but the when, when you're grinding, the more wood that is on the wheel the more you can take off but also the slower you have to go yeah yeah so oh, well you can tell when it bogs down a couple of times there where yeah. when you take or when you're going too quick i guess yeah. you know that's your sign to slow down yeah but i mean if you're only because sometimes you, you see guys do they start at the edge and they go just chip it and they're only taking like this much of the wheel uh -huh. where when i started kind of in the middle there's probably this much of the wheel that yeah. the wood is touching yeah and you're to me it's more efficient to try to do it that way and you try to i try to go as low as i can until this plate will hit the front part of the stump okay and then i go forward chip that one down and okay. then move back and chip the back one down yep so i only had to move it twice well on that hydraulic top link that made it easy even from that aspect too to get further down oh yeah totally you otherwise know, it, it, four inches yeah that's pushing yeah, it yeah i mean you're barely getting at ground level right so yeah that, that top link made a big difference so a couple other things i noticed you have a clamp here on your third function what's that about well that's just hold the button so i don't have to because otherwise uh, i can't get the third function to work so that's essentially giving it continuous flow back to the circuit up into these controls it is, yeah. Huh, that's interesting. I, I, I can't figure out if there's an override, a different way to make that happen so you don't have to have a clamp on here. Mm -hmm. But it works pretty good so far? Well, perfect. I mean, if it breaks, it's another $5 part, so. <laughs> that's not too bad. No. And now I notice you are starting this at a low idle and then working your way up to full speed? Correct. I'm assuming that came out of the manual as well. I just do that with everything. Yeah. Everything is that's PTO driven. You start up slow because if, if you hit it, when it's going full speed, you're gonna break something. Yep, yep. Uh, along that point as well, this does have a slip clutch on it. There's not gonna be a shear bolt, so it is gonna have that slip clutch protection, which is something you definitely wanna have when you're dealing with wood, logs, anything like that, really hard material. Even if you find a boulder or a stone buried down underneath, that's a good thing to have. So this is a good example. You have what, two and a half acres out here? Yes. Okay, so of a big tractor for a little property. And there were some big projects that were going out here due to the flooding. Now, where we're standing, at one point, this was all water? Three feet of water. Three feet of water, all the way up almost to where you had the berm there around the house? Correct. So you brought in how many yards of sand? At 360. 
360 yards of sand that you see right here. And so that's where this tractor got a lot of those 300 plus hours on it in the last year, huh? Yep. Wow. And then on top of that, all of these trees, you cut them down and took them out? Yes. Wow. Wow. That's with, just- With this. Yeah, with this. Them. With this, dragging them out. And then you end up with a work saver grapple too, right? Yes. Yeah, so that- and that, that took a while for that, for me to smarten up to that. <laughs> but so you can see, it just depends on your application, you know? The property size doesn't really determine the size of the tractor. It's gonna be the size of the projects that you have going on. There's some of these things, I just can't imagine moving 360 yards of material with a little 1025, you know, a little subcompact tractor. That's, that's hard, it's like spooning it. Yeah, right, so it had to take, well, it took 300 and some hours just to do it with this tractor. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Eric has done all sorts of stuff since he's had this tractor last August. June. June, wow, been that long, almost a year, but he did add on one of those hydraulic multipliers to the backside. You're gonna see he's got the PTO link, big tool rack up on the ROPS bar here. The list just goes on. There's a lot of things I can't even see from this location, but a lot of really cool little modifications. We'll give you a quick spin around so you can see what it's all about. Well, we added the PTO link. I added some bars from hardware store to hook up stuff to keep things out of the way. <laughs> added a light, obviously the, the BTR hangs stuff from up there all the time. Did a homemade chainsaw holder. I like that. This is now you custom routed this and everything right around the. Yeah, I routed it around the ribs. Yeah. So it fits in just two bolts. So you that's can still sharp. get to the Zerks. That's nice. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Added some hooks onto the bucket. I tried to abuse that a little bit and it's working. So since the PTO link is new with me and my channel, mm -hmm. what's your feedback? You've had it for a while, right? Mm -hmm. How long have you had it? Uh, Since the fall, maybe? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yep. All right. And yep. I love worth it. the money? Oh, yeah. Oh, does totally. It, does oh. it save a lot of time? Oh. It does. Okay. Yeah, I, you, I don't have grease in my fingernails, do I? <laughs> well, no. That, that, that's, I mean, that, that's, that was the biggest hassle, is always getting it lined up to the spline and everything. Okay. Even though the shaft will move a little bit and you lift it, you know, you, you know get the, you know, the drive shaft to move. Yeah, um, yeah. But I find the easiest way is once you get it hooked up uh, to the three-point, is lift it so that the... Uh, your thing is level, your drive oh, shaft is level. Oh, the PTO shaft is this even. Okay. Because otherwise you're messing with the with the U-joint to try to get it at the right angle. Okay. Uh, okay. So then it's like two seconds. Yeah, okay. And to get back off is pretty quick too? Oh yeah, it just right. undo the pin and cool. we'll turn it halfway and pops right off. I see, I forgot about this. You got, this is a fit right. Yeah, it's fit right, hydro like yeah, fit yeah, right yeah. hydraulics, uh, hydraulic top link. And that was like, four or five month lead time, something like that? Oh uh, yeah, it was six, almost seven month lead time. But I hear really good things. Has it, yeah. been, has it been sized yep. correctly for he you? Does, does, yeah, he, yeah, I sent him pictures of everything and measurements and showed him pictures of the multiplier and uh, he sent all the tools and stuff like that, the you know the L joints and stuff like that for the, yeah. to get them in there and uh, it, it took probably 15 minutes to install. Wow. And everything was included. That's pretty sweet. And he's out of California, I think, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yep. It's made to order. So. See, yeah. Saved him getting in and out of the tractor all the time. Heck yeah. No, I love it. I don't want to be without a top link, that's for sure. Yep. And then this thing down here, the ball dog. The ball dog, and yeah. What is the purpose of this thing? That's so when you hook up a chain, the chain doesn't pop out. Uh, okay. So I used it to uh, pull logs out of the lake in the back when the backyard was underwater like this part over here you push it okay you push it in and you turn it yep okay and then you can lock it in there yep and then secures this way so it doesn't come out correct okay and then, then it it's onto the hitch and it doesn't let go of the hitch because so it can't come off on this end either so you're you're eliminating some possibilities of having you know chain slip and ricochet and okay do crazy stuff it's kind of a safety thing i yep i see yep for sure i can see that so i gotta ask is there anything you wish you would have done differently getting your tractor set up or is this the way that you want it right here you know I, I think it works out pretty well the three port you know multiplier is, is all I really need I don't have anything that that's gonna need more than that so I right ran now. lines up to right the front. now right now yeah yeah I've only had it for a year so <laughs> who knows that may be for sale of you sometime I get a four or six one like you uh, but no I got lines that I ran up to the uh, to the front for the uh, grapple that was a a big learning curve yeah uh just to figure out to find the right route to get it through to make sure that they're okay. safe because i tend to run into things and stuff and i don't want get anything snagged grabbing. underneath or anything like yep. that i want to get it up above the frame if i can just to protect it and um so and, and just keep things organized here so that yeah. there's not too much i mean right. 
had different size hoses and stuff like that just to get the right reach and okay uh you know the different 90 degree angles for it and stuff like that and yeah. so yeah it was a learning curve but yeah you know it was good yeah well i noticed you do have this i like this way that you have it installed with the solenoids on the bottom mm -hmm. i installed mine with the solenoids on top and i think the next time i do it i'm going to flip it over and have it like that just for the the weather rain snow whatever well, might be well and it keeps out of the way so you don't snag them i mean these things are light wires you yeah grab that on something and it's gone yeah yeah um, so a little bit more protected that way i like that Alrighty, guys well thanks for sticking around you know this is a really good look at what this stump grinder can do and obviously it's a pretty good application for it as well now eric here we were just talking he didn't grow up on tractors you think it's pretty easy to use huh yeah if i can do it uh, i'm retired i was a sold insurance all my life so it's uh yeah, if I can do it, anybody can You can do get the it. hang of it. Yeah. Yeah, so all this stuff with this tractor, it's not that difficult. You know, you just got to be able to take your gloves off, get dirty a little bit, and you're going to have some fun. So I have one last question for Eric, which is, what do you think about this product? Is it, would you recommend it to others, or would you look elsewhere? What do you think? No, this is perfect for the application. Okay. Uh, it's taken little stumps. It's taken stumps, you know, twice, three times the size of that. Yeah. Uh, and it's rugged. Nothing's gone wrong with it. Uh, it's it's a tough machine. Um, it's okay. perfect. I'd highly recommend it. Is there anything you wish it had that it doesn't have on it? No. I, it does it everything. I don't, All right. It's great. Well, hard to argue with that. If you like what you see here, I would love to get a thumbs up from you. Do hit that subscribe button right down below. Read through the description underneath the video or head on over to GoodWorksTractors.com. Hey, thanks so much for stopping by. Thanks to Eric for having us. And until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon. Mm -hmm.